Okay, so for week four of summer anime, the shows do continue. We had some delays last week because of the Olympics. So yeah, My Hero, Shoshiman, some other shows had a little break. But yo, besides that, you know, episodes continue. Very solid shows. So many romance shows, so many high quality shows as well. So yeah, let's get started. I'll start talking about My Hero Academia. So yeah, we have season seven, episode 12. The uh, manga actually finished up this week. So yeah, you know, final chapter. People making a lot of memes. I, I thought the ending was okay. <laughs> But it looks like the fandom is putting Deku down hard. So yeah, that's funny. But yeah, besides that, this episode, it kind of started off with Bakugo dying. So Shigaraki, OP as fuck. It just, he has no quirks, but his hands just keep growing. Like, well, how does that make sense? He looked to be dead, like, you know, it's literally fatal. But he did like some final kind of explosion that throws Shigaraki off guard. Everyone else is trying to heal him. So best Venus is trying to heal him. Also, there's Ed Shot, the ninja hero that's also like sacrificing his life to heal him. I'll talk more about that later. But yeah, besides that, everything else on the other sides are also like pretty dire. So all for one kind of transformed into prime form. After getting burned by Endeavor, he kind of had Ares quirk one time, just like rejuvenation heal. So that's crazy, bro. <laughs> like they were fighting all for one, they were struggling, but like now he's just about to kill everybody, it looks like. And then this quirk did have a drawback, which I did like because it kind of rewinds his body permanently. So he's just going to keep getting younger and younger until, like, I guess he dies. So, yeah, I mean, that's a big drawback. It's kind of like a one-time kill switch. So his backup plan is he transferred all for one, like, the real power to Dobby. So, yeah, we thought Dobby died. Todoroki did, like, his, like, cool fire ice, like, cooling move to, like, just destroy him. It was very nice, but yep, he's he's alive. <laughs> he literally looked like an immortal spirit of vengeance. So, yeah, it looks like Dobby has all for one right now. And Shigaraki just, like, infinitely growing hands. So it, it's bad for our heroes. Deku's still kind of speeding up. He's in the water trying to make his way there. And he, he sees, like, a vision from the first One For All user. And he's like, I got a way to kind of speed up your power. So, yeah, it looks like Deku's going to make it in time. We'll see. But, yeah, Bakugo's already dead. But it looks like they're healing him, which I didn't like because you don't have time to heal him. This is, like, a legit fight. Shigaraki's, like, attacking everybody. Like, why are you focusing on Bakugo? Just let him die. But, you know, obviously, he's one of, like, the main characters. So that's why they're doing this. But shouldn't you focus on your priorities? Why are you healing him right now? Also, like, why don't you have a way? Like, you created this, like, kind of giant prison dome. Why don't you have a way to transfer injured people to get medical treatment? Like, shouldn't there be a way to do that? Like, you know, manipulate the floor or something if someone gets injured? But I guess they assume Deku would be here anyway, so they didn't really have any fallback plans. But Shigaraki kind of, like, punches everyone everybody like the big three they're all like defeated Mirko literally only has one leg like available everything else is literally destroyed and then Ed shot kind of heals Bakugo's heart because his quirk kind of turns into like little ninja strings so he kind of like replaces like the veins in his heart it turns into a heart himself this is very weird I have a lot of questions because Ed shot is basically sacrificing his life to like go into Bakugo's heart but if, if Edshot dies won't the quirk just expire anyway or also why doesn't Edshot just fight Shigaraki because it looks like his power is like pretty good he can like navigate through the arms so why even waste time healing Bakugo like I'm kind of glad that Bakugo's not dead but th this was like the worst way to handle it like in the middle of battle so he's also kind of mad because he's like I broke this guy why are you trying to fix him Everyone else is kind of fending him off. We see his body is like trying to adapt because it's under a lot of stress and then all these hands are like getting destroyed. So he kind of turns into like this muscular giant arm form instead of like all his arms being spread out. It just like stores up into his body and then he's super strong punching everybody. Bakugo's body is about to be punched again and then Deku comes in last second. So yeah, we end the episode there with Deku coming in. I mean, it was cool because yeah, we had like a lot of nice moments with the big three showing up. I mean, I could definitely nitpick so many things like why was it necessary for Deku to hang out in the beach and everyone over here gets severely injured like if i was Mirko, if i was bakugo if i was anyone here i would not forgive deku for showing up late my boy he forgot to lock in when they were going through the portals also it's kind of funny like everyone is in their prime form oh we got shigaraki with prime all might power we got all for one with prime all for one powers it's kind of very cheesy although with all the flaws in the writing the action is very hype and i did love how all for one just turned into prime all for one because this was literally like a suicidal move no one else could really copy it because if they also use Ares quirk they just like kill themselves in the process so the fact that all for one did it made a lot of sense it worked very well and he's legitimately so threatening he can like suck people's quirks up so easily and it seems so scary seeing everyone like see how he's just like fully healed yeah i mean the fight continues a lot of exciting moments you know the manga finished up so yeah we're almost to the end of my hero but yeah you know crazy anime it does follow the rule of cool so it doesn't matter if shit makes sense or not as long as there's some like fire action and emotional moments i guess that's pretty much the point of the show all right so for tower of god season two episode five what a great episode i think one of the best episodes we had to see 
season two. We finished Bam's journey, him and his friends, him and Ja just like winning the exam, going past the 20th floor. And now we see Kuhn, the best boy. He continues to deliver. I loved him. He doesn't have his funny blue triangular hair tie anymore, but he's back here forming his own team. So it looks like he wants to form a team. He has Rachel there. He has a lot of other strong people he's recruiting. So yeah, what is Kuhn's purpose? It looks like he has a relationship with Rachel. They're kind of like bonding over losing Bam, the bestie. He kind of sacrificed himself to save Rachel from all the monsters underwater. That's her story. So does Kuhn believe her? You bet he's not believing that lion ass. <laughs> So yeah, Rachel is there. She's in bed. Her her legs are apparently disabled, but she can walk perfectly. And she's basically putting up a front uh, with everybody. Her only goal that we know so far is to climb the tower. She wants to just, you know, keep climbing. And she's going to use whoever she can to, like, get her way. So basically, Kuhn is trying not to get manipulated. He tells everyone else, don't get manipulated by her. And we have to kill her eventually. It's so cool, like, seeing that our older characters are still alive, they're still climbing, and they're still, like, very likable. So yeah, Rachel is our common enemy i mean it's too easy to just kill her so so i guess kuhn is slowly gonna try to get information from her and then you know maybe he'll kill her but then maybe bam will like interfere at the last minute and they'll meet up so yeah we'll see what's gonna happen i think kuhn is on the 25th floor and bam is on the 20th floor so they're really close we'll see what's gonna happen next time but yeah you know crazy episode i love all these characters out here so we have two parties. They all have a lot of like nice charismatic people with like different types of powers. There's a lot of fun missions and character interactions and we can all bond together to fuck Rachel because she's lying, manipulative, gaslighting, girl bossing. So I guess we'll see where everything goes, but yeah, very solid episode. Okay, so for Oshinoko season two, episode five. So the play is almost starting. Everyone is preparing, rehearsing. We see like rivalries between Kana and Akane. They really hate each other. It looks like they have a lot of history together too because uh, Akane really like Kana, looked up to her. But now like her personality is like really shitty. She like makes fun of a lot of people when she was younger. So yeah, they always like argue. It was really funny seeing them argue and everything. We see kind of like glimpses of other characters. Ruby also shows up to like the rehearsals. So she also wants to see what Aqua's doing. We see the final rivalry where Aqua and Akane, they don't want to lose to Kana and the main character of Tokyo Blade. So yeah, everyone's preparing. Everyone is very skilled. We don't know who has the power right now, but I mean, they're all working together for the same play. So yeah, as the episode ends, we see everyone kind of entering the theater. This is like the first performance. This is what we've been working for. So yeah, I mean, the curtain rises. Although it's so funny. We see Aqua, he didn't get over his ptsd he's trying to like lock in in the mirror just like repeat things imagine i dying in his head and trying not to like collapse at that that's very tragic like my dude is doing some like real ass acting out here and now it looks like he's strong enough to kind of like overcome his ptsd for now so yeah i mean next episode the play is gonna start i'm very excited to see how they'll like kind of show the play in the anime will it literally be like a shown in action thing happening or will we see like kind of characters monologuing talking maybe showing like how they grew we gotta see but yeah great anime good character interactions real emotions out here and yeah i love the rivalries like the show is very serious but also has like a lot of cute moments as well all right so for the elusive samurai episode five so yeah now he's running away from sadamune he's like the arrow shooting guy he's literally trying to like hunt down tokyuki and all his friends all the traders problem is they're right in front of him but he doesn't really notice <laughs> he just sees this little boy beating him in this arrow shooting competition so yeah tokyuki kind of jumps over sadamune does like a quick back shot that was very sick <laughs> And then, yeah, like, Sadamune is chasing him down, but Tokyuki hits him in the head and then beats him. Like, he just gets more points than him. So that was very fun. I love the action in the show. Although, yo, seeing the CGI horses makes me so sad for JoJo Part 7 because they'll, they'll probably do the same thing there. Like, this anime looks really good. The animation, the art is so nice. But then even animating the horse riding was too hard. So, yeah, the deck is stacked against you, David Productions. Besides that, though, you know, Sadamune doesn't take losing so easy. So he kind of, like goes back into the temple and he's like we're gonna take your land you only have like a week to evacuate so yeah it looks like they can't really go against him or also fight and kill them so then the priest has another plan just steal the executive order to invade the land because these imperial orders are like really official and they take a long time to get approval so yeah how do they steal the orders well they recruit a new thief his name is genba and i guess he's just like another super powered young kid like all of other tokiyuki's retainers so yeah tokiyuki goes to recruit him but he's kind of like a really scary dude it looks like he can hear anything he's like really fast can just like sneak up behind you and steal things so yeah he's like a true scammer but then tokiyuki is like really nice so even when genba tries to like bully tokiyuki to 
Tokiyuki like kind of misunderstands and is like really nice to him. And then yeah, they become friends. It looks like this dude is kind of lonely. His dad kind of trained him to like only care about money. So they both kind of sneak into like the military palace to like steal the Imperial command. The thing is he gets betrayed by Genpa. It looks like Genpa can like change his face. Because he takes his mask off and he looks exactly like Tokiyuki. That's kind of weird. I don't know why they look alike, but it'll probably be explained next episode. But, you know, very interesting show. You know, more characters coming in. It's very fun, very lighthearted, even though it's like, you know, serious samurai murders happening out here. But yeah, just like seeing these little kids running around trying to fight the evil emperor is like very fun every week. Okay, so for Nier Automata version 1.1a episode 5, another sad episode. We get some A2 backstory, more of her. If you've seen part one of the season, we also got a lot of her backstory as well from there, where basically like Yorha kind of like dropped her and a bunch of her other units back onto earth but then they got shot down by a lot of lasers there's only like four of them alive they have like their group trying to survive they meet up with other like resistance forces on the bottom and then they both like become friends but then they get like ambushed by a shit ton of robots so yeah here we got more of that we see like what happened like how many of her old unit died yeah i mean finally like we see some more tragic shit happening while everyone was dying we see a lot of people were infected by the virus so yeah everyone is just like attacking each other all these friends are just corrupted it's so sad, and A2 was in the middle of it, so she can, like, barely, like, focus. And then even sadder, she gets, like, a notification from Command. This whole plan, this whole mission was actually, like, a test, because they want to make stronger, like, combat units. So they just wanted to see, like, how these units would adapt to the Earth. And it looks like, yeah, the fact that they were surviving makes the test successful. So, yeah, the fact that they got betrayed by Yorha Command and they were just, like, sent here to die pretty much with no assistance. It's very sad. So, yeah, everyone got infected. A2 is still alive. We see, like, some other androids sacrificing themselves. They're blowing up, like, this evil server room run by the robots. And, yeah, they blow each other up with the black boxes. A2 is the last one alive on her unit. Lily from the other resistance group, she also survived. So, yeah, both of them are doing their thing on their side. But they pretty much survived under Earth together, and yeah, they had a lot of, like, tragic shit happening in their past. So A2, we see, like, she kind of, like, repressed these memories. Her memory unit got damaged. And yeah, she, like, wakes up kind of in grief, but yeah, she remembers her past. Very sad, you know, more context on this. We knew most of this. They're just piling the sorrow up, and yeah, I don't know how to feel. <laughs> these androids, they've been through a lot. They just want to live a normal life at this point. And yeah, we'll see what's going to happen because yeah, A2 is finally awakened. Uh, 9S might try to attack her. There's also like that giant like white building showing up. And then yeah, we know that 2B is like confirmed dead. So <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll see what's going to happen next time. All right, so for Monogatari off in Monster Season Episode 5. Not the finale to the Nandeko arc, but you know, she makes some more progress. And she's teaming up with Yotsugi who gets a new outfit because her old dress kind of got ripped and torn up after she got like beaten by the god Nandeko. So now she's wearing like this like streetwear, just like baggy sweaters and sweatpants. A new hat it's so funny and they're kind of like formulating a new plan because yeah they know how to track down god Deco, but yeah how do they fight her so yeah yotsugi has one use of unlimited rulebook so they try to beat both of the nadekos one at a time so first they do the shy nadeko and then they'll finally face off with the god nadeko because yeah it looks like the shy nadeko everyone is just using her she just listens to whoever so yeah the current nadeko sees her in the bookstore just like by herself tries to sneak up on her to like you know tra trap her in a piece of paper the bookshelves just like fall and collapse and she's about to get crushed so she gets saved by the flirty nadeko because yeah they have control of the older nadekos so yeah i mean cool like moment with the flirty nadeko just like holding up the bookcase saving the real nadeko and then they kind of like talk they understand their differences and their feelings he's like can you draw me cuter next time and i appreciate how you've grown everything like that so the story with all the nadekos is kind of like a metaphor of her just like trying to face her past selves and like you know grow so yeah i mean flirty the deco dies it looks like the shy nadeko also got crushed by the bookshelf so yeah i mean all the nadekos are defeated besides the god nadeko and the current nadeko still has the angry nadeko for support so i guess that's cool yotsugi also helps out and then they kind of face the god nadeko now but before they do that we see all these like other topless nadekos that were created by the god nadeko they kind of have just like robotic personalities just like walking around it looks like they don't have full control she's just like mass producing these like kind of topless nadekos but yeah anyway like there's too many so yotsugi uses unlimited rule book blows up all the bookshelves, and we just see it's a straight path in the room to the god Nadeko. So Yotsugi's out of commission now, so yeah, it's up to Nadeko and angry Nadeko to face the god Nadeko. But yeah, you know, very fun episode, just like a lot of good voice acting, solid character moments from Nadeko. 
of the cute moments from Yotsugi as well. Their interactions are insanely good. I didn't know I needed this, but yeah, having Yotsugi be like kind of like the main character of this anime feels really nice. And then yeah, she's just helping everybody out. Seeing Nadeko's growth is also nice because yeah, she was like a bullied, troubled girl in like the original Monogatari. So I seeing her kind of like rejuvenated here is like really good. Okay, so for Shoshimin episode four, we see Osunai. She's getting mad at the dude that stole her bike because he just like abandoned it for no reason. So yeah, they kind of solved the mystery on what he was doing, why he stole the bike and you know where he lives also where to track him down and ruin his life so yeah it looks like osanai was about to try to like murder him or something kobato kind of knows about osanai's past because both of them have like kind of hidden personalities that are just like really evil <laughs> so yeah they see the worst in humanity they like try to get revenge but yeah now they're trying to be normal so they forgot about that life i feel like that's kind of funny because these are like literally tiny skinny high school dudes so are you telling me in middle school, Osanai was just like beating people up, bodying people? I mean, I wouldn't put it past her, you know, watch out for the quiet ones. But even Ken goes kind of questioning, hey, are you kind of overreacting? Like, Osanai wouldn't do that. But yeah, anyway, they kind of like spend like most of this episode uh, tracking down the guy. So Kobato is kind of like thinking, writing his ideas on a blackboard, talking with Kengo. It's kind of like not really that interesting, this mystery. Like, it was definitely very obvious. Like, we saw the guy that stole the bike. He was like talking to like his gang members or whatever. And then they were mentioning like kind of getting a license for the boss or whatever so yeah it looks like he's 15 years old the dude that stole the bike and you need to be 16 to get a license anyway so it looks like he was like forging someone's id to like get the license under their name so i kind of figured that out from like random facts and details so yeah osa and i wasn't really trying to kill him or anything she was just like you know taking pictures of him in driving school to frame him so yeah he gets in trouble his whole group i think gets in trouble as well we see osa and i she might have some i, I don't know okay is this like multiple personality disorder or is she just joking because yeah when she talks to kengo she's like i'm osa and i's twin sister so i'm assuming the twin sister personality is a kind of like aggressive murdering personality while the real osa and i is kind of just like a shy girl that loves sweet things things i don't know man she might just be joking i'm looking too into it the obvious but you know the people are doing her wrong so I, I mean it's hard to blame her she's just like a young girl that wants to like eat her sweets and everyone's just like giving her a hard time for no reason so yeah, after that her and kobato kind of hang out at this pancake shop she's eating the pancakes very good pancakes got the syrup on them and water splashes on her back just like a couple behind her fighting the woman like splashes water on the dude's face but she kind of misses and it hits osana in the back of the head and she's about to kill this couple so yeah it looks like they're kind of like in an illicit relationship maybe the dude's cheating on her wife so i guess we'll ruin this guy's life because he messed with osana you know you bully her then she'll go after you get revenge all right so for dead demons dddd destruction episode 10 um we hang out with another alien friend so it's the dude that kind of took over the dead idol's body i love her face like she makes that she like kind of looks at this guy but yeah he's just like a weirdo alien but then he seems to be nice they're all just like talking all the aliens seem to be like nice people like they're, they're invaders but then when they see the humans have actual intelligence and are stronger than them they're all just like scared and hiding so you kind of feel bad for them somewhat but anyway this alien's backstory is that yeah all of them kind of crashed on their spaceship here on during the incident and then yeah like the idol and like his whole band died but also one of the little kid aliens was also dying so all the other aliens kind of like did an emergency procedure by transferring him into his body so i don't know how why this works why they're compatible <laughs> But yeah, these humans and aliens can like go into the bodies. Uh, we, we've seen from episode zero, yeah, that is the case. And it looks like Ontan might also have an alien inside of her because we don't know what happened after Kalude tried to jump off the building. We still have questions about that. But yeah, you know, they're just hanging out with the alien. Like, you know, life goes on, more college stuff, more slice of life. We see people protesting the army as they're like fighting off the aliens. And uh, yeah, the story kind of like keeps progressing. It's very creepy. Like the army, the military, they're trying to like attack these aliens. They're trying to harvest their ship for like this like natural resource that like provides energy a lot of other college kids are trying to like protest against them and help them and then kadude and ontan are just like directly being friends with them so a yeah, very interesting story so far you know every episode is very cool it's a bit unpredictable when things will escalate but you know i'll keep watching week by week and you know hopefully things don't go wrong all right so for pseudo harem episode five cute episode we meet nanakura's little sister and she's getting corrupted she's copying nanakura's personality and now she's like teasing her own boy so yeah, it's like very funny seeing their interactions you know super cute super wholesome like there's no stakes no one really gets angry at each other it's just like nice solid development as people are just like talking to each other very wholesome this anime heals the soul although if you are lonely this might make you feel a bit more lonely you also see lazy nanakura so yeah her new personality where she just like lies in the sofa and just asks for food and it's just like a potato we also see them hanging out in this uh festival so a yeah, summer festival out here they're kind of here with all the acting club members but they kind of want to hang out together as like a date so they kind of like avoid everyone else they text each other it's like so many cool interactions 
connections. And a little sister is also kind of making a name for herself, just like talking a lot. And you know, just like playing with Nanakura. So yeah, I loved her interactions. This anime is super cute, super wholesome. If you're feeling sad, if you're in a bad place in your life, you know, maybe watch this to cheer you up. All right, so for Shika Noko 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 Koch Tan Tan episode five, there's more crazy shit happening. We see Koch Tan just like trying to survive in this world, bro. It's so crazy. There's like this Bravo group trying to attack her and, and then Shika Noko kind of helps her out. She like, it gives her her antler which is like a grenade and just like blows up the rival organization is so everyone just like falls so yeah a random ass fight scene happening we see koshtan going to the zoo and seeing like shika noko is just like impersonating a deer at the zoo and just like becoming the deer god and like brainwashing everybody after that we see neko she's part of the student council she wants to uh, disband the deer club but then she accidentally like scouts the deer club and just like joins it. Like Shika Noko kind of forces her. So yeah, funny stuff happening, you know, cute interactions. There's like crazy ass shit happening every week. So yeah, more characters getting corrupted. The deer club is getting bigger. And you know, Shika Noko is just like destroying this whole city. Okay, so for Makine, Too Many Losing Heroines, episode four. Very beautiful episode again. I, I love the story here. Yeah, although it, it was very tropey. There's so much manufactured drama happening. So yeah, the story isn't too strong. It's very tropey, but you know, seeing the character moments are very nice. So it's not really about these relationships. It's about the girls getting dumped and then their kind of friendship with the main character after. So yeah, what happens here? We saw Komari. She kind of like admitted her feelings to Shintaro, who's like the kind of tall dude who joined them in this like literature club trip. The problem is the other literature club member, Koto, she was also in love with Shintaro, but like they didn't, they never really admitted their feelings. And then even if she did, it was like a misunderstanding this love confession from komari actually makes them like get together <laughs> because this dude was thinking and he's like oh, i can't let this i can't let my other childhood friend down like komari unfortunately had like bad timing for this but she like wingmanned another couple but you know they kind of like make up you know they're a part of the literature club still so they, they keep talking there's some awkwardness but they kind of move past it so after some manufactured drama with the main character he kind of feels that he's a bit too unpopular so he's kind of like weighing down the main girl after they talk to like her childhood friend he kind of feels bad for like rejecting her she still has feelings for him but then she wants to move past it and then like you know do her own thing so just like a lot of sappy moments as everyone's talking establishing the status quo letting their feelings out establishing their positions now it looks like they're all becoming friends with the main character but you know as the anime continues it's like very beautiful to watch like the backgrounds are very nice the characters are just running around their hair is flowing it looks really good so yeah the story does continue all right, so for Alia, sometimes hides her feelings in Russian, episode 5. Crazy ass episode, the sister Yuki just coming in like a missile. <laughs> just like going in all in with incest. It's like unironic. Like I thought she was joking at first, but the, the length of this episode is just like 15 minutes of the sister just like kind of manipulating her brother, talking to him, and just like becoming naked in front of him. It was so weird. So yes, yeah, so the brother Kuse kind of walks into his house. We see the sister just like coming in, hiding in the bathroom. Like it, it looks like she's joking joking but it's like way too on the nose to be a joke like the way people are describing it is that she loves like these anime tropes she's like an otaku so that's why she's being all weird with like the kind of anime incest i think she legitimately had feelings for her brother but yeah i mean it's kind of explained later because yeah their parents divorced so yeah that might be why but yeah anyway she kind of sees that kuzi is getting like really close to alia so she feels a bit jealous but yeah, she kind of talks so much this episode very fun like her character is very funny she's literally the best girl but also the worst girl at the same time with the, the amount of unironic incest like if you show this show to anybody like if you recommend this anime to anybody they'll they'll question it but you know after that you know incest at home at school he still hangs out with Alia she literally kissed him on the cheek last episode literally told him that she loved him in Russian they both kind of move past it though because of some misunderstandings and then yeah you know the episode continues the student council stuff is happening and then, yeah more crazy romance stuff is going on so it's anime feels very good very funny definitely very weird as well so yeah, I love how hard they're going with everything and and yeah, we'll see what happens as the show does continue. And yeah, that is it for the episodes this week. Thank you for watching. You know, please let me know what your favorite anime this week is. But yeah, I'll see you next time as the summer animes do continue. Peace.